Hey, what's up everybody? Steve with the Penguin Outdoors YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in today. Today we're talking about kayak trailers, specifically my kayak trailer. I'll kind of real quick go over the general three options people usually go with, and then I'm going to talk about my trailer. Um, importantly, I'm going to show you all the ways I screwed my trailer up when I was building it. This trailer I've had for about two and a half years now, and it's on version like, I don't know, five or six, and I've made some serious mistakes with it, and I'm gonna show you some of those. I'm gonna show you what I have now, um, give you what my thoughts and opinions are, and hopefully save you a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of work as you get ready to build your kayak trailer. So before we jump into all that, I just wanted to say thank you for tuning in today. If you're not already a subscriber, it just takes a second to hit that subscribe button. Um, it's super quick and easy for you. May not be that important for you, but it's definitely important to me. And I appreciate all of my subscribers and I'll appreciate you too. So just consider subscribing, check out the other videos, throw a like or a comment down below, whatever you wanna do. So let's get into it. Guys, if you don't have a beer koozie with you and your girlfriend on it, are you really in a relationship? So there are really three very common ways people go about building or acquiring a kayak trailer. The first is purchasing a kayak trailer. They're expensive, but they're designed for kayaks. They're ready to go. Um, I don't know any of the brands off the top of my head, uh, except like, I guess, Yakima, they make one, but you can look those up. In my opinion, they're not worth the money. For what I've invested into my trailer with my mistakes, I could have bought one 100%, um, but they're just expensive. The second way a lot of people do it is they find a used jet ski or boat trailer and convert it over to a kayak trailer. Not a bad option at all. Actually, probably one of the easiest options, except that they are expensive. The third way is people use a utility trailer. Either they convert it like I have, or they just get a utility trailer, strap the kayak down on the deck, roll it right on into the water, and float her off. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Uh, I'm in a kayak tournament group named Camo, Kayak Anglers of Missouri, and there's a guy on there named Steve. That's exactly what he does. He's got a, a utility trailer, and he just backs that bad boy right on into the water, straps the kayak down to the deck, good to go. Let's jump into my kayak trailer and the things I did right and the things I did wrong. So the base for my kayak trailer is a trailer from Harbor Freight, specifically this trailer. When you buy it from Harbor Freight, it comes in a box. You gotta put it all together. I'm not gonna lie to you and say that it's like super easy. You'll spend a day on it. Um, it's Some parts of it are really easy. Some parts, <clears throat> excuse me, are a real pain in the ass. So when I got it almost all the way together, it looked like this. Then I got a tongue uh, for it. So it, it comes with a standard uh, coupler that just bolts like right to the end of the A-frame as, as you saw in the original picture I showed you um, from the Harbor Freight website. And I had at the time an Outback, which is almost 13 feet long. Uh, it just wasn't gonna work. I needed a longer tongue. So the Harbor Freight trailer, the coupler, which I'll show you in a second, uh, is not a standard size, so that was kind of a pain in the butt, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But so I got the tongue on it, and then I had an idea for it, so I had some friends come over, and we took some square steel tubing I had laying around, and we welded a box frame on it, and it looked like this. Then, before I even used it, I put some wood sides on it, because I wanted to be able to put stuff like camping gear and whatnot inside the trailer area and then put the kayaks on top. And I had it set up where I could put three kayaks uh, on the trailer because my daughter's small lifetime kayak or Pelican or whatever it is could fit inside the trailer. And then I had J hooks for my old Sun Dolphin because sometimes people wanted to use that. And then the Outback sitting on top and it looked like this. So the downside to that setup was, A, the gear was a real pain to get to on the inside. Um, the Outback 
was a pain to get on and off the top. That picture was actually right after I got the Outback and it was taken on the first trip I ever took with the Outback. So it wasn't fully rigged out and it was just a real pain to get the kayak on and off the rails. So then last year, I modified the trailer to look like this. Where I could just strap the Outback down to the deck and I would roll it off on the wheels um, but I couldn't wet launch it and part of the reason was the tongue was too short uh, the other reason was just the way it was strapped to the deck and then I was like well do I put bunks on it and I was like well maybe I'll look at that for next year so that brings us to 2023 when I started rebuilding the trailer I decided I wanted bunks on it and I wanted to be able to get two kayaks next to each other one of them being the pro angler here and I didn't have the pro angler yet it was just on order um, when I started building the trailer and I wanted to be able to put the Outback on it, which is behind me. Uh, the Outback's actually been sold. It's leaving us pretty soon here. I'm uh, a little sad, but anyway, I digress. So I wanted to be able to put two kayaks on it, on the bunks, roll on down the street. So then it looked like this. So the problem with that design was when there was only one kayak on it, which is the Pro Angler, it was way off to one side and the weight was not distributed in a way that was going to work. And it turns out the Pro Angler and the Outback wouldn't both fit on it that way without getting them out way over the wheels and I just was not comfortable, it wasn't stable. Um, the other problem was in that picture I just showed you, we'll put it up again. The tongue is still the tongue it was originally. So when I tried to launch the Pro Angler, I actually got the exhaust pipes into the water, um, which, let's throw in a clip of that. So it was just, it was a pain. But I said, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm not even going to worry about carrying the Outback anymore because I got rid of it. The other kayak that I'm getting for creek fishing and stuff would fit on the bunks and so would Kira's kayak. I was like, so all I got to do is lengthen the tongue and we'll be good. So then I lengthened the tongue and it had way too much flex in it because of the type of tubing that I had to use, which again we're going to talk about in a minute, and the flex look like this. So then I shortened the tongue to where it would be longer than it was before, but not nearly as long as I wanted it. And the reason I wanted the tongue longer is because I have to launch with the charger until I get something else, and that's not happening right now. And I wanted to be able to use the boat ramps on the boat ramps that the charger is capable of doing it on. So I cut the, the tongue back. It's much more stable, but I'm like, man, it's still going to be like real close to the water to get this thing floating. Like it's just going to be sketchy. I'm going to end up using the wheels more than I want to. And it just defeats the purpose of all this work I just did. Right? So me and Christian were talking and he had a genius idea. And when he said it, I was like, bro, I don't know how neither of us thought of this before. There's probably a bunch of you watching this video going, you jackass, this is what I would do. And now that's what I've done. I lowered the out or the I'm sorry. I lowered the pro angler all the way down to the deck. I had it on those channel struts before. Let's put that picture up again. So as you can see in that in the picture, I have channel strut running up from the side of the trailer and then across and the PVC bunks bolt to it and it elevates the kayak up off the trailer. Well, the higher up on the trailer uh, the more sketchy it is anyway, but the higher up it is, the longer it takes it to get into the water, i.e. the further in you have to back the trailer. So the way that the Pro Angler clears everything under it with the three inch PVC bunks, there was really no reason for it to be that high up. Uh, it was That was just the, the height that I measured at. I'm like, well, I think this will be good and I went with it. So now the trailer looks like this. This is my almost completed version. And now I'm going to go around the trailer as it is now. All right, guys, 
I apologize for the mess and any echo you might hear. It's really windy and it's rainy today and I have to film inside the garage and I could have waited for a sunny day, but it's kayak season. Guys are building trailers. They need the info. So I wanted to get this out to you and share you, share it with you. So on a Harbor Freight trailer, this is a coupler, or at least that's what I call it. More of like an A-frame bracket. And there's a tube right here. Normally this is flipped over, bolted to the top, and the coupler bolts directly to it. I needed a longer tongue. So the inside of that tube is like a little over an inch and a half wide, and it's like two and a half inches tall. It's a really odd size. And so you can't put like a two inch square tube in there. The only square tube I could find that would fit inside that channel is inch and a half. So inch and a half is what I had used when I originally built the trailer. And I just had it bolted to the, uh, or I put it inside the channel and bolted it to that coupler, um, just like you would with the actual coupler. So that worked fine. Um, it would wobble every now and then. I'd have to tighten the bolts down. But since I needed a longer tongue, what I wanted to do is flip it over, bolt it down, and instead of bolting the tube inside the channel, weld it to it, then weld the plate to the trailer, and then put a beam across here, which I'm still gonna do, that welds to the end of that just for a little extra security. Like, so I extended the tongue through. Well, as you already saw, there was way too much flex in that, in that tongue because the inch and a half, once it gets so long, just can't handle it anymore. So what I will do in the future, not today, is grind that coupler plate back off of there, get a new plate cut to match that doesn't have a channel or anything on it, just a flat fixed steel uh, piece that's the same size and shape as that, and I will get a two inch uh, tube in the thickest wall I can find and I will weld it to it and I will be done and it'll just be the strongest tongue, like the, the tongue will be ugh, tongue twisted. <laughs> the tongue will end up being stronger than the trailer. But for now, this is what I'm going with. Now, the trailer originally comes with the kind of coupler you've all seen where you grab the lever and you push it down I had it pop off on me twice since I've owned this trailer and it was adjusted once by me and once professionally, right size ball, no corrosion, still came off. Just a real bad deal. Um, luckily the chain saved me, but it came off twice. So I've changed over to this Kurt quick hitch. I believe that's what they call it. Quick coupler, quick hitch, something like that. It sits down on the ball and this pin goes through and locks it in place against the ball. It's not coming off. No way, no how. It ain't popping loose. It ain't coming off. It's a beautiful thing. I'm actually really happy about that. So that's what I ended up with with the tongue. It does not come with a trailer jack. I can tell you after owning this trailer for two and a half years, you definitely want one. So I got one. I bought it at Harbor Freight for like $35. It's not bad at all, bolts right onto there. Uh, this mess of duct tape here is the ground screw into the frame, which was covered up by duct tape. And then all the excess wire for the pigtail is just duct tape to the frame there. So, and you might be wondering, why do you bother having a trailer wheel if you have it sitting on jack stands? Well, that's because I was working on stuff and it just, I didn't want it rolling or moving, so I just put it up on jack stands. So as you saw in the old pictures, I had the channel strut coming up. I no longer do. The channel strut is bolted right flat to the deck. So the bolts that are holding these, when you buy your trailer, it comes with these metal brackets that go on the side, and uh, they're, they're for two by fours. So people putting a wood side on there can just put a two by four in it. I'm not using those brackets, so I just use the bolt from the bracket for the channel strut. It's bolted the same way on both sides. And then I have three inch PVC that's bolted to the channel strut using a carriage bolt. You just cut a, uh, 
you cut a bigger hole in the top of the pipe than you need and then you cut a hole for the uh, bolt to go through I'm using a 3 ace bolt it's a 3 ace uh, carriage bolt goes through washers on either side super simple I've got eyelet hooks bolted right into the existing holes in the frame with a uh, cam strap running through I did upgrade the hubs well not the hubs but I took the caps off the hubs and put bearing buddies on there uh, the Harbor Freight trailers are not known for having the greatest lifespan on the hubs they're not bad it's just especially if you're putting them in water if you don't already know this when you have a hot hub hot wheel hub from driving down the street and you back down a boat ramp and it hits that cold water it tries to suck that water in and that's how the water gets past your grease and everything else bearing buddies put constant pressure on the grease to help prevent the water from getting in they also help keep the grease on the bearings so they just really extend the life of everything you should still check your grease fairly regularly i don't check it nearly as regularly as i should also make sure that you're using the appropriate grease i have a high temp grease that is made for boat trailers so i've had bearing buddies on both sides while we're talking about the wheels You'll notice there is not currently a spare tire on the trailer. Get yourself a spare tire. Mine's on order. It'll be here soon. And then I'll put it on here. The fact that I haven't had a boat or a spare tire for like two and a half years is a major, major fail. And you should have one. So coming to the back, the lights are on real simple. They come with the, the trailer. These are replacements because mine died inside a leg a week. Um, but same thing. Eyelets there, channel strut there. And it's the same thing down this side. So it's a really simple design. Much more simple than what I started out with. So I think that this will be really great, really stable. And my plan, because right now I can only hold one kayak, and it definitely needs to hold Kira's. And it's going to need to occasionally hold the other one that I'm getting for the creek fishing stuff and stuff at the same time. So what I'm going to do on one side or the other, I haven't decided which side yet, probably this side, the passenger side. I am going to bolt on brackets similar to what I had before and bring channel strut up and make a square frame here and a square frame down here and then run two connecting pieces of channel strut and put J hooks on it and bolt my, or bolt, so that I can put the other kayak on the J hooks and secure it in place. Um, not 100% sure if that's how it'll go, but that's how I picture it. A square frame here, square frame here, two connecting bars. Um, it could even end up being an extra set of, like an extra square frame closer because Kira's kayak is smaller. I haven't entirely decided yet. Going back to the front here for just a second, uh, you may have noticed I don't have a winch on it. So you might be wondering uh, what I do when the kayak starts floating. I've got a, a, a rope that hooks to the front handle here and then has a carabiner on it. It clips to this uh, anchor right here. And the rope is about seven feet long. And I just throw the excess right over the bow here that way, when the kayak hits the water, if it doesn't float off on its own, I can just push it. And then once it's clear of the trailer, I just unhook the rope there and walk it around to wherever I'm pulling it up to while I uh, go park the trailer. So that's my kayak trailer adventure. The Harbor Freight trailer ran me, it was on sale at the time. I want to say I paid about 450 ish for the trailer. Call it 500 by the time you buy the trailer. Um, register it get plates on it and all that stuff it was about 500 bucks the square steel tubing for the original frame uh, for the wooden sides and the kayaks on top I had all that it was scrap I wasn't the original design I wasn't into that thing more than $500 um, I think I even had the plywood so it was it was pretty cheap initial build um, then I was into it nothing for the second build, 
uh, where it was just flat on the deck. And that's because uh, I just took the wood sides off and put the kayak on the deck that was already there. And then as I got into iterations of this design, things just got messy. So my trailer is not a budget build, but yours can be because you've just seen all the things that I did wrong. All you need to build a trailer as it is now is uh, the trailer, some channel strut, the bolts that came with it, and two 10 foot sections of three inch PVC pipe and square tubing for the tongue. That's it. And if you do the tongue the right way, whether you do it yourself or pay somebody, it'll cost you a little bit of money, but in the long run, still cheaper than just going out and buying a kayak trailer. So I hope that my mistakes have helped you. If you like this video, please hit subscribe. If you see anything about this setup now, where you're like, hey, I think you made another mistake, or hey, I think you could do this better, by all means, leave it in the comments down below. And we'll catch you on the next video. Tight lines, everybody. See you next time. Well, we hoped you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more great videos from the Penguin Outdoors YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. And while you're at it, hit that little bell so you get notified when new content is available. Please leave us a comment down below and let us know what you thought. And don't forget to hit that like button. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.